He is known for his characteristic tongue-in-cheek style, with which he frequently ridiculed superstition, religious practices, and belief in the paranormal. He is recognized for being a Hellenized Syrian satirist, rhetorician, and pamphleteer. His name is Lucian of Samosata. Lucian of Samosata, a Hellenized Syrian satirist, was a master of wit and sarcasm. His writings, filled with biting humor and satire, ridiculed superstitions, religious practices, and belief in the paranormal. Born into a lower middle-class family in the city of Samosata along the Euphrates in Syria, Lucian's life is shrouded in the ambiguity of his own words. His extensive use of sarcasm in his writings makes it difficult to discern the truth about his life. According to his oration, The Dream, Lucian was initially apprenticed to his uncle to become a sculptor. However, after a failed attempt at sculpting, he ran away to pursue an education in Ionia. It is believed that he became a traveling lecturer, visiting universities across the Roman Empire. Eventually, he gained fame and wealth through his teachings and settled in Athens, where he penned most of his surviving works. Lucian's writings were immensely popular in antiquity, with over 80 works attributed to him. His satirical masterpiece, A True Story, is considered by some as the earliest known work of science fiction. He pioneered the genre of comic dialogue, parodying traditional Socratic dialogues. Lucian's satire extended to public figures, targeting the cynic philosopher Peregrinus Proteus and the fraudulent oracle Alexander of Abenotikis, among others. His witty and irreverent style influenced notable works such as Thomas More's Utopia, Francois Rabelais' writings, William Shakespeare's Timon of Athens, and Jonathan Swift's Gulliver's Travels. Lucian's legacy endures as a testament to his sharp intellect and clever satire. While the details of his life may remain obscured by his own sarcasm, his writings continue to inspire and entertain, leaving an indelible mark on Western literature. Lucian, a renowned philosopher and writer, had an intriguing way of presenting his ideas to the world. Although he is not mentioned in any contemporary texts or inscriptions written by others, everything that is known about Lucian comes exclusively from his own writings. Throughout his works, he introduced a variety of characters with names very similar to his own, such as, Lucinos, Lucianos, Lucius, and, the Syrian. These characters have often been interpreted by scholars and biographers as, masks, or, alter egos, of Lucian himself. However, Daniel S. Richter, a critic, challenges this assumption. He believes that these characters are not self-inserts by the author but rather fictional personas that Lucian uses to challenge conventional distinctions between Greeks and Syrians. They serve as tools for Lucian to explore and satirize societal norms through his writing. Richter suggests that these characters are primarily a literary trope employed by Lucian to divert accusations that his Syrian background had somehow tainted the purity of Greek language and genre. By using these fictional figures, Lucian can navigate the complexities of his cultural identity while delivering his satirical messages with wit and creativity. However, it is important to approach Lucian's writings with caution. British classicist Donald Russell warns that much of what Lucian says about himself should not be taken at face value. Russell compares Lucian's self-portrayal to his persuasive account of a voyage to the moon in his work, True Stories. He advises against treating Lucian's writings as autobiographical, as they may contain elements of fiction and embellishment. Despite the uncertainty surrounding Lucian's personal identity and the authenticity of his narratives, his philosophy remains thought-provoking and relevant today. His use of fictional characters as vehicles for social commentary challenges us to question societal norms and prejudices. Lucian reminds us that identity is complex and fluid, and that we should approach both our own stories and the stories of others with a critical eye. Lucian, a young boy born in the town of Samosata, grew up in a world where traditional religion was on the decline. The Roman Empire had annexed his town, and the population consisted mostly of Syrians. As he navigated his early years, Lucian found himself immersed in the Hellenistic philosophies that dominated the intellectual landscape of his time. In Samosata, education was a luxury that Lucian's lower middle-class parents couldn't afford. So, his uncle took him on as an apprentice in the family statue-making shop. However, Lucian's talents as a sculptor were far from impressive. In fact, he ruined the statue he was working on, which led to his uncle's disappointment and anger. Feeling the weight of his failure, Lucian decided to run away from his uncle's shop. As he sought solace in sleep, he experienced a vivid dream. In this dream, he found himself caught in a struggle between two entities, statuary and culture. The personifications of these forces fought over him, with culture ultimately winning his allegiance. This dream marked a turning point in Lucian's life. It inspired him to pursue a different path, one that would lead him to seek an education. The dream, as this oration later came to be known, was considered by many to be an autobiographical account of Lucian's journey. 
However, scholars have debated its historical accuracy, with some viewing it as a playful literary work rather than a factual retelling. Regardless of its authenticity, the dream serves as a reflection of Lucian's desire for knowledge and intellectual growth. It highlights his rejection of a life constrained by the limitations of his upbringing and his determination to embrace the world of ideas. It is through this pursuit of education that Lucian would eventually emerge as a renowned philosopher and writer. Lucian, known for his transgressive dialogues, was once described as a young man wandering in Ionia with no clear direction in life. At that time, he spoke in a barbarous manner and dressed in the Assyrian fashion. It was then that rhetoric, personified, took him under her wing and provided him with paideia, or education. Ionia, the center of rhetorical learning, offered prestigious universities in Ephesus and Smyrna. However, Lucian's financial circumstances made it unlikely for him to afford the tuition at these schools. Nevertheless, he managed to acquire extensive knowledge of rhetoric, classical literature, and philosophy, although the details of his education remain a mystery. Initially, Lucian attempted to apply his rhetorical knowledge to become a lawyer but became disenchanted by the deceitfulness of the trade. Instead, he resolved to become a philosopher. Lucian embarked on a journey across the empire, lecturing throughout Greece, Italy, and Gaul. In Gaul, he may have held a highly paid government professorship. Around 160, Lucian returned to Ionia as a wealthy celebrity. He visited Samosata and stayed in the east for several years. Records indicate his presence in Antioch around 162 or 163. Eventually, he purchased a house in Athens and invited his parents to join him there. It is believed that Lucian married during his travels and mentioned having a son in one of his writings. For approximately a decade, Lucian resided in Athens, where he shifted his focus from lecturing to writing. It was during this period that he composed the majority of his famous works. Lucian wrote primarily in Greek, using the Attic Greek style popular during the Second Sophistic Movement. However, his work on the Syrian goddess is written in a successful imitation of Herodotus' Ionic Greek, leading some scholars to question its authorship. Around 175, Lucian ceased writing and returned to traveling and lecturing. During the reign of Emperor Commodus, it is speculated that Lucian may have secured a lucrative government position in Egypt. From that point onward, Lucian vanishes from historical records, and his death remains a mystery. Lucian's journey from a lost young man to a celebrated philosopher and writer serves as an inspiration. His pursuit of education and his ability to adapt and excel in various fields demonstrate the power of determination and lifelong learning. Lucian's story reminds us that education is not limited to formal institutions but can be sought through personal exploration and intellectual curiosity. Do you want to explore more philosophers? Who do you want to see featured next? Subscribe and leave a comment below to let me know. I'll see you in the next video.